this is Dr. Bertha So I will so are you presenting Word of Inspiration on Hope of Glory Network. Today, truly let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Today, I continue the series on the 10 piece of Joseph's life and how to use it to fulfill God's purpose for your life. The message is entitled Part 9, Joseph, the Prime Minister. Our text is taken from Genesis 45, verse 5, and I read, Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Now these words remind me of Jesus' words which he spoke when he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. One of the marks of any leader is that they try to preserve life. They work to preserve life and not to destroy it. Therefore, be not be grieved, for God did send me before you to preserve life. My hope is that by the end of this message, you will understand that leaders preserve our lives. You will learn the power of forgiveness and that you will turn any complaining in your life about global problems into becoming a problem solver. In my last message, we saw how Joseph had been sold into slavery, ended up in prison, and became second in command to Pharaoh overnight. He was given unbelievable authority. He was given a chariot, power, a wife, new clothes, new honor. And you know what? He went to work right away. Joseph did not waste a second. The Bible says, Genesis 41, verse 41, and I read, And Joseph, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. I will put a ring on your finger. I will. So many promises were made. Verse 46, And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out before the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. As soon as he became prime minister, he got to work. He went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. So let's see Joseph's first few months as prime minister. Verse 47, And the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in cities, the food of the field which is round about every city, he laid he up the same, and Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. It was without number. Verse 53, And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said, and the death was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. Go unto Joseph, and what he says to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all Europeans, all the countries came unto Joseph to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. So as we read this, there are about three, three lines I want you to keep in mind. One. There was dearth in all lands. And there was famine over all the face of the earth. And all the countries came to Egypt unto Joseph. There was dearth in all the lands. All countries came unto Egypt to Joseph to buy corn. Now, I want you to note that they didn't come to Egypt to Pharaoh or to the leaders of Egypt. They came to Joseph. He had the answer. There was global famine. It was not unique to Egypt. It was all over the world, but the solution was in Egypt. And the solution was in one man 
who lived in Egypt, all countries came to Joseph. Today, as I talk about Joseph the Prime Minister, I want to challenge somebody out there. The world as we live in today is full of global problems. There's terrorism, there's drug trafficking, there's human trafficking, there is poverty, there is hunger, there is malaria, there is HIV. Some have been predicted like Joseph predicted this one and some just came on us. Where did HIV come from? Where did the energy crisis come from? Like Pharaoh, the world leaders are at a loss. They don't know what to do. Where do they turn? They keep having meetings upon meetings and pumping funds into research. They have no clue what to do. They can define the problem. They can dream about it, but they don't know what to do. Otherwise, malaria would be eradicated by now. Otherwise, there'll be no global hunger and poverty. HIV will be cured. Cancer would be gone. We've increased the sophistication at our airports. You get searched and searched and searched, and yet some bad guys manage to break through and terrorize the world. The world is looking for a Joseph, or many Josephs for that matter. Somebody that the world leaders can say, go unto Joseph, and whatever he says to you, do it. Are you ready? Are you preparing yourself to be a Joseph? Or do you join the masses of people who choose to criticize governments, politicians, and leaders for the little effort or whatever they try to do to make life better? We forget that these leaders were put into office based on manifestos and promises they made. They're just like us. They're not God. Today, if you're a student, maybe you're about 17 years old, like Joseph was, or you're 23, you're 25. Identify a global problem and tell yourself, I'm going to work on solving it. Take steps to work on it. Develop your skills so that the world leaders can say, go to Joseph. If you're an older person, be the Joseph of your community. Give the leaders a break. The Bible says that pray for leaders and for all those who are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. If there's anything you want to say about a leader, just pray for them. I watch TV every day and I see people bashing leaders. Or sometimes you talk to friends and they're insulting leaders of our time. And they don't have any answers either. If you don't have an answer, just keep quiet. Pray for them. Be a global problem solver. You don't need to go to the United Nations. Write in your neighborhood. Look for a way to put up a library for children. Fix a road. Fill a pothole. Build a public restroom. Provide a food bank for the children in your community. Do something. Choose to lead and stop complaining. Pray for wisdom to come up with something that all countries will come to you for. Mark Zuckerberg came up with Facebook. Someone else came up with WhatsApp. These technologies have revolutionized the way we communicate with people. They've helped us to connect. All countries come to Facebook. All countries are on WhatsApp. You name it. Look around you and determine to stop complaining about problems and tell yourself, I am like Joseph. I will be a problem solver. The world needs your input. World need, leaders need your skills. You can make a difference. You can work to eradicate poverty. You can work to eradicate malaria. You can provide energy solutions. Thomas Edison came up with the light bulb on December 31st, 1879, at the age of probably just he was about 31. He made the first public demonstration of incandescent light. He said, we will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candles. Today, 137 years later, there are many countries who don't have access to electricity. Thomas Edison came up with a way of distributing electricity. He had over 1,093 patents to his name. He was the first person to record sound on a phonogram. 
Today we have cell phones and we take it for granted. These people change the world. Today I want to challenge you to be a world changer. What are you going to do or say so that people will say, go to Joseph? Genesis 41, 55. Go unto Joseph and whatsoever he says unto you, do. One other thing I notice about world leaders or world changers, they do not limit their skills to, I'm a doctor, I'm a medicine, and that's all I do. I type, and that's all I do. They open themselves up to all the faculties that God has endowed them with. They open themselves up. Today, if you have a cell phone, do you ask yourself, how is it made? How can I make it better? Or do you just complain when the cell phone is not working? I look like people like Benjamin Franklin. People call him a polymath. By age 23, he had started a publishing house. He was publishing the Pennsylvania Gazette. He made experiments on electricity, conduction, refrigeration, lightning. He did not limit himself. Some people put limits on their mind. This is all I can do. I'm a manager. That's it. Well, you have a brain. You can think about medicine. Nothing stops you from thinking about technology, about energy, about water problems, how to solve malaria, HIV. Open yourselves up. Another thing we notice about Joseph in our text, he forgave his siblings. He forgave his brothers. He told them, don't be grieved or angry with yourselves. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been sore in the land, yet there are five more years of famine. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity on the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it wasn't you who sent me but God and has made me a father to Pharaoh. Haste you, go you up to my father. And say unto him, your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of Egypt. Come down unto me, and then you will tarry in the land of Goshen, and you will be near me, you and your children, and your flocks, and your heads, and all that you have. And there I will nourish you, for there are five more years of famine, lest you and all your household come to poverty. Joseph forgave his siblings. Some people become leaders and they decide to use the leadership as a place of revenge. You know, 17 years later, Joseph buried his father. And he was 49 years old at that time. And after his father died, in Genesis 50, we see that his brothers became afraid again. They said, maybe he will take revenge. And you know what he told them? He said, am I God? Am I God? God sent me ahead of you. I will nourish you and I will take care and the take care of you. And the Bible says he will he was kind to them. He told them I will nourish your little ones. He comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. Leaders choose to be kind. Am I God? Anytime you choose to take revenge against someone, you're trying to make yourself God. Today I've shared with you part nine, Joseph the Prime Minister. And I want you to notice something. It was not about the position. He had a function. Learn to make your job about function and not position. For example, let's take a physician. I'm a physician so I can relate to that. Some people may just want to be called doctor for the sake of it. When somebody's really ill, can you heal them? I know People who are not physicians, like they work in the hospital, they go around, you know, they'll sit in a bus with a stethoscope so people would think they're physicians. Now, if somebody is sick, can you heal them? Or maybe you've done many courses, you just list many titles. Are you making a difference in this world or is it just about how many degrees you have or how many courses you've completed? Choose to make a difference. Do not become fixated about your title. Do the job on the job. Be an individual who chooses to change the world.
Today we've looked at individuals who have changed the world we live in, make a, making a global impact. And I encourage you to make a difference with your life. Be like Joseph the Prime Minister. He wasn't concerned about what they called him. He just wanted to preserve life. He made a difference. He went around the cities. He got to work right away, gathering food. And when the world became hungry, Pharaoh said, go to Joseph. And whatever he says to, do, to you, do. Today, we also talked about various global problems, things that the world leaders cannot seem to wrap their minds around. Don't complain about them. Please ask yourself, how can I step up? How can the world leaders tell everybody, go to so-so and so, and whatever he says to you, do? Will you be a Joseph today? Are you going to be the next Joseph? Today the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And he will do so because he loves you. Have a wonderful day. This has been Dr. Bertha Ayi presenting Word of Inspiration on Hope of Glory Network. And today's message was entitled, Joseph, the Prime Minister, and the 10 piece of Joseph's life, and how you can use it to fulfill God's purpose for your life. God richly bless you. Oh!